Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus, dear friends. The part of God's Word that we'll give our attention to this evening comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reading in both chapters 10 and 11. Paul writes, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. This is the word of our Lord. The special meal that Jesus instituted on this evening has been given a number of different names by the church, each of which served to call our attention to some of the unique features of this meal and, of course, some of the special blessings that God provides through this meal. We often call it the Lord's Supper. And that name speaks right away to the eating and drinking involved. It is, after all, a meal, but we know that it's no ordinary meal. It was instituted by our Lord Jesus not to feed our bodies, but rather to nourish our souls. The name also reminds us that we are to celebrate this meal according to the loving guidance that our Lord has given us. He's the one who has determined what's on the table for this meal. He provides guidance in His Word as to who should be invited to this meal and how those guests are to prepare themselves. After all, it's not our supper that we're celebrating tonight. It is the Lord's Supper, to be enjoyed as He intended so that it might be a blessing for us, His people. We sometimes call this meal the sacrament of the altar. That word sacrament reminds us that in this meal, God is the one who is at work. He's there serving us with His grace and favor, not the other way around. But then, of course, with our sacrifices of thanks and praise, we acknowledge our gratitude to God for all that He's done for us in Jesus. We call this the sacrament of the altar simply to distinguish this sacred act from the sacrament of holy baptism. God offers and gives His forgiveness in both of these sacraments. In holy baptism, God joins His promise of forgiveness to the water. In the sacrament of the altar, he joins that promise to the bread and the wine. We also call this meal Holy Communion, or sometimes simply Communion. And that's the name that we're really going to focus in on this evening. That word communion is taken from one of the Greek words found in our text tonight, koinonia. And it's translated in our text as participation. Paul writes, is not the cup a participation of koinonia, communion in the, in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread a participation in or a communion with the body of Christ? See, here's what that word koinonia means. It means a sharing in something or a coming together with something or someone or having a close relationship or association with something or someone. And so maybe you recognize why that word koinonia, or our word communion, 
is such a fitting name for this meal. Because that coming together, that close relationship, is seen in three very important ways as we celebrate the sacrament. First, there is the coming together, the communion of the bread and wine and the body and blood of Jesus as we celebrate this meal. Then there is the close relationship, the coming together of God with His people as one by one He shares His grace and forgiveness with us. But then there's also the coming together, the communion of us as God's people, united in our faith, united in our need for forgiveness, united in our hope of everlasting life. Our celebration of Holy Communion is really a celebration of the community that we enjoy both with God and with one another. What Jesus gives us by offering His body and blood together with this bread and wine is what makes it possible for us to be in community with God and with one another. And it also serves to strengthen that community for us. So we started with these words. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Paul is telling us right away here that this is no ordinary meal. What looks and smells and tastes like ordinary bread and wine is in reality a participation in or a communion with the very body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Now how this can be is mystery to us for sure, but still Jesus' words about this are very clear. When He gathered with His disciples on that evening to institute this meal, He said, this is. This unleavened bread that was on the table for the Passover celebration, Jesus says, this is my body. This cup is the wine that was used in the celebration of the Passover meal. This is my blood, Jesus said. Now again, we acknowledge our inability to fully comprehend how this can be. Yet thanks to Jesus' clear words, thanks to the Apostle Paul's clear words, we know that it's true. And it matters. This coming together of Jesus' body and blood with the bread and the wine and the sacrament matters. Jesus is telling us that He is giving us here something real and something precious. This is not just a nice picture for us to consider. It's not just something meant to jog our memory so that we can remember all that Jesus has done for us, though it certainly does that as well. No, Jesus is telling us this is a reality. Into every hand and every mouth gathered at His table, the Lord delivers the very price that He paid for our redemption Himself. And along with it, He delivers the forgiveness that He won for us through faith in Him. Jesus says, this is the new covenant in My blood. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus coming together with that bread and wine is the promise and the guarantee that God forgives our wickedness and remembers our sins no more. A picture or a symbol can remind us of that truth. But Christ's body and blood actually carries that truth to the hands and mouths, hearts, His people. Matter. Christ's body and blood given to us in this sacrament is what first established and now strengthens our communion with God Himself. You know, as amazing as that connection is between the body and blood and the bread and wine and the sacrament, it's even more amazing that through this meal, we are connected with God Himself. Paul wants to make sure that we understand what a miracle of God's grace this really is. So he writes here, Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread 
and drink from the cup. We come to the Lord's table, believing in Jesus as our Savior, knowing according to His Word what it is that we are receiving there. But this examination helps us to understand and appreciate more fully just how badly we need what God is offering there. I mean, when we honestly examine our hearts in the light of God's holy law, we recognize very quickly that we should in no way be able to be close to our God or to expect anything good from Him. We learn His commandments so that we can make this examination based on His standard and not our own. So we ask ourselves some questions. Have we always loved God above all things? Have we honored His name on all occasions? Have we gladly heard, learned, and put into practice all that He has shared with us in His Word? I suppose we could stop the examination right there, right? Just hand it in knowing that we failed. But that's just the first table of the law. Have we honored those in authority over us, not only with our words, but also in our hearts? Have things like hatred and lust found a home in our hearts at time? Have we ever taken what didn't belong to us? Has every word that has left our lips been both true and loving? Have we ever sinfully desired that which God hasn't given to us? Prophet Isaiah says, Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. So who are we to think that we could ever come close to God or be in community with Him? But you see, it's not our personal worthiness that makes us welcome at the table. Rather, it's God's gracious invitation to the unworthy for Jesus' sake. Jesus invites us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to me, hear me, that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. It's the worthiness of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who laid down His life and shed His blood that secures a place for us at this table. In fact, the only way we could really be unworthy to come to the table is if we fail to acknowledge the need we have for what God offers there. Or if we fail to believe that Jesus has met that need in full. You know, Martin Luther rightly says that a person is properly prepared to receive this sacrament who believes these words, given, poured out for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus invites us to his table, cleanse us, pardon us, heal us, to restore our relationship with God. Through faith in him, all of those blessings are now ours. Let that truth fill your hearts and minds every time that you gather at this table. Maybe you need to close your eyes to everything going on around you and simply see Jesus there offering himself to you. Maybe you need to close your ears, or not entirely, maybe just tune your ears to hear not the voice of a pastor or a deacon, but the voice of Jesus saying, this is my body and blood. This is given and poured out for you so that you can be with me and the Father and the Spirit forever. This holy communion is a celebration of the community that we now have with God Himself. But if you do close your eyes or cover your ears a little bit, don't forget about the people who are around you. 
your brothers and sisters in the faith to the right and to the left. Because this too is a great blessing that comes from this sacrament. That community that we enjoy, that one body relationship that we have with the fellow members of Christ's holy church. You know, in the Apostles' Creed, we describe the holy Christian church as the communion of saints. The Apostle Paul says here, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. Whenever we come together to celebrate this sacrament, we are showing ourselves to be exactly what Christ has declared that we are. One body of believers join both now and for eternity to one another and to Him who is our head. And don't we need that kind of community? Aren't we longing for that kind of community? I mean, we live in this world that's so splintered and so divided along racial lines and economic lines and political lines and national lines and everything else. But here at the Lord's table, all of that fades to the background as we come together as God's people, united with this need for forgiveness that we share receiving the same grace from the very same Savior, confessing the same truths taught to us by the very same Spirit. Besides that, we live in a world that is so opposed to Christ and His Word. But here in this community, we find encouragement, we find consolation, we find camaraderie to continue to live as aliens and strangers in this world, to continue to gather together as God's people when so many have decided to just go on their own. This Holy Communion is really a preview of what we're going to be enjoying for all eternity. It really is as close to heaven as we ever get here on earth. We acknowledge that in the words of our Communion Liturgy, when we say, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name, we join their glorious song. This holy communion is a foretaste of that heavenly banquet, a celebration of the eternal and heavenly community that God has promised and prepared for us. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. What an awesome commandment that is. Such a meal filled with mystery and grace that celebrates such a community with God Himself and with all of His people, both here on earth and in heaven too. How could we and why would we ever want to stay away? Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding Guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.